In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a loading screen in Pygame. This loading screen is going to be displayed after our main menu screen and will get updated as the assets for the game's first level are being loaded. I am going to create this loading screen for an existing Pygame project that I've been working on. Currently, I have a title screen that displays when the game launches and clicking any key will launch the first level. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, I'll have the starter code available in a GitHub repository you can download. I don't want to spend too much time going over this existing starter code, but to give you a quick overview, we can look at these two classes that I have created. In menuScreen.py, we have the start screen class, and if we scroll down to the events method, we can see that when a key is lifted, a new instance of our level is created, and we set our screen to that level. So we delete the start screen instance, and we start running the level instance. And if we go into level1.py, we can see in our class over here, our constructor calls this load method and this new method. This load method will just load up our tiled map from an asset that we have created over here, base level.tmx. And in our new method, we create all our sprite groups. And depending on what sprite is being loaded up, we extract images from a sprite sheet and we extract images from other resources as well. So these two methods are responsible for the time it takes for our level to appear. As you can see, for this game, the first level is displayed almost instantly after a key is pressed. We don't really need a loading screen currently, but since this project is likely to get bigger, adding a loading screen will likely be a future requirement anyway. To simulate the lag that occurs between the main menu and the level being displayed, I'll temporarily add a time.sleep to the end of this new method. This is just for the sake of this demo, so you should remove it if you choose to implement this in your code. If we run this game again, we can now see that there is some noticeable lag before our level screen appears. Now let's go about actually displaying a screen for when assets are being loaded in the background. We're going to create a class called loading screen and a new Python file called loadingscreen.py. We're going to create four methods within this class, one for the constructor, another for the run method, a method for handling the Pygame event loop, and lastly a method for displaying content on the screen. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that in the run method, I create a main loop for updating the screen, and it is within this loop that the events and display methods are called. In our events method, we're going to loop through each of our Pygame events, and if a quit event is found, then we're going to quit the game. When we're creating a new screen for our game, we want to pass in our current game instance to the screen that's being created. So in our constructor, we'll pass in a parameter called game, and then we'll store that value in a field called self.game. Then in our events method, if we detect a quit event, we want to call self.game.quit. Our current goal is just to display the screen while the assets are being loaded in the background. So for now, I just want to show the text loading on a black background while this is happening. To place the text on the screen, I created this draw text method inside our base game class. I expect a font to be passed into this function, and then on that font, I want to call the render method. We also expect parameters for x, y, the color of the text, and the text itself. So once we have the surface, we create a rectangle, we specify its position, then we blit it onto the screen. Now back in our display method, let's go about actually implementing this text now. So in our display, we need to fill the background to be the color black. And then we also need to call pygames flip method. So we'll say pygame.display.flip. Change that to flip.display. And then in our background, we want to call self.game.surface.fill. And then to get our colors, we'll get this from this file constants.py. And if we go into constants.py, you can see I have all these colors defined here. So within this method now, we'll just type in the constant black. And then we want to specify our font. So first, we'll start by specifying our font size in the constructor. We'll just say 28 pixels for now. And then for our actual font, we'll call pygames font function. And we want to use a font that's already on the system, so for now we'll just use the sans serif font. To use this, we need to pass in pygame.font.match font and then pass in the name, which is sans serif. And then we'll pass in our font size as the second parameter. Okay, now in our display method, we just need to draw our text now. So now we'll say self.game.drawText. Then we need to pass in all our arguments. So you can see we have X, Y, font, color, and text that we need to pass in. So for our X position, we'll pass in width divided by two. And this width value is also in our constants.py file. 
And then we need to subtract that by half the font size as well, just to center that. And then we have height divided by 2, minus our font size divided by 2 as well. Height is also defined in our constants file. And now we need the argument for our font. So we'll pass in our font over there. And then we'll pass in our color. We want it to be white because it's on a black screen. And then lastly, the text loading dot dot dot. Now we can go to our menu screen and we need to change this so it opens the loading screen instead of level 1. We'll change our import. And then in our events, we want to update this. We'll say self.game.setScreen. And then we'll create an instance of our loading screen. Pass in self.game as the argument. And that completes our menu screen update. So if we run this now, we can see this text loading actually appears on our screen which means that we've completed our main goal for this initial loading screen. Our next objective is to actually load our assets while the screen is being displayed. We want to update our loading screen to show progress while our assets are being loaded in the background. To perform both of these tasks at the same time, we need some form of concurrency. That means that we basically have three options to implement this. The first is multi-processing, where we have multiple processes set up. The second is multi-threading, where we have more than one thread running at a time. And the last option is to use asynchronous code. So when we're talking about multi-threading, what this basically means is that our threads share the same memory space and we have two things running at the same time. Since they share the same memory space, we can easily share variables and data between both threads, but we just have to be wary about race conditions. Race conditions are situations where both threads attempt to access the same address at the same time. So that's something to look out for in multi-threading. If we're doing multi-processing, we don't really have to worry about this because code with multi-processing does not share the same address space. The issue with multi-processing is that if you want to share data between two processes, you need to use an IPC mechanism. And writing code for this is a bit more convoluted than it is for multi-threading. So for this tutorial, we're going to stick with writing code that involves multi-threading. To implement multi-threading for our loading screen, what we're going to want to do is go into loadingscreen.py and then at the top of this file, we want to import the threading module. And then we're also going to want to import the level that we're actually trying to load up with this loading screen. So I'll import this level 1 class that I have over here in this level1.py file. And then in our loading screen class constructor, we want the programmer to be able to specify which level they're actually trying to load up. I'll create another parameter called level. And then within this constructor, we'll save that in a field. And then in our run method, we want to actually check which level uh, this loading screen is going to be used for. So at the top of our run method, what we're going to do is that we're going to create a conditional that says if type self.level is level one, that means that if it's an instance of level one class, then we want to create a new thread that will focus on loading that level. So we'll say threading.thread and then we'll specify that our target is our level's new method. And the new method is basically where we're going to load up all our assets, where we create all our sprite groups and where we get all our uh, sprites from our map. Then we want to call loading thread.start and that will basically just start up our thread. And this thread will run alongside the main thread, which is going to be handling this loading screen class. Then we can also have another else. If you want to add on to this class to, to load up a different level, for example, you can just edit this code over here. For this tutorial, I'm not going to do that though, because I only have the one level created. And then what we want to do is that we want to check if this loading thread is still working or not. So we're going to say if the loading thread is not alive, then we can say that we want to change our screen to be our level screen now because the loading operation of our level has completed so we want to change the screen now to show the level. Now before we can run this we need to do two more things. First in menu screen.py we need to specify the level that we want to open. So remember we have that level parameter so over here we'll say that we want to create a new instance of the level 1 class. So at the top over here we'll import level 1 and then we'll create a new instance of level 1 passing in self.game as our argument. And then we'll set that as our screen. And then in level 1.py, what we want to do is that we're calling a new method to load up our assets. So we want to actually call the load method within, within the new method as well, just so that we can load up our map in a different thread as well, just to save us even more time. 
And then in our constructor, we're not calling new here anymore. We're calling it separately from our loading thread when we're creating it. So we'll just move self.new out of the constructor as well. And then in main.py, we can run our game. I click a key, you can see our loading screen appears and then our game loads up just as intended. All that's left for our loading screen now is that we want to show the actual progress on the screen that our loading thread is making so that we can see how much time is left until the level 1 screen appears. Now that we're able to run two threads concurrently, I want to add a loading bar animation to reflect how much progress our loading operation has currently undergone. To start, we're going to focus on the design of this progress bar. So in our loading screen class, we scroll down to our display method. Under this code where we fill the background of our screen, we're going to specify that we're creating our progress bar code, and then we'll have two variables for the bar's width and the bar's height. So for the bar's height, I'll set it to 30 pixels. And then for the bar's width, I want it to take up three quarters of the screen when it's 100% completed. So I'll take the width of our screen and then remove a quarter from that. Now for the X and Y positions of our progress bar, I'll have variable X and we're going to set this to be half of the width of our screen and then we'll remove half of the bar's width from that. And then for our Y position, we'll just set it to be half of the height of our screen. Now what we want is to create a rectangle to represent the bar's fill. So we'll create a variable called fillRect. Uh, we'll set that equal to the result of PyGamesRect method. We'll pass in those parameters, x, y, the bar width, and the bar height. The bar width we're temporarily passing in because right now we're making it so that this fill rect takes up 100% of the area that we want. After, we're going to have to change this bar width so that it only reflects the current progress that we have completed. Then we'll draw this bar over here. So we'll say pygame.drawRect, pass in our surface, specify the color white so that it stands out on our black background, and then pass in fill rect. Now for our text, we want to move the loading text a bit above so it doesn't collide with this progress bar. So on this Y coordinate for our draw text method, we'll take away the bar's height and then shave 50 pixels off that as well. So if we do this, this is what our progress bar and loading screen should look like currently. And you can see the bar is just set and fixed to 100% complete. So now let's create an outline rectangle around our progress bar just to make it look a little bit better and so the user can see how much remaining progress is left. So we'll create a variable outline rect, store the result of Pygames rect method in there, and then what we want to do is that we want to create some distance between this and our fill rect. So we'll take 10 pixels off our starting position and 10 pixels off our Y position as well. And then we are going to have to add 20 pixels to our bar's width because we have adjusted it so it's 10 pixels back so that it's equally spaced on both sides. Then we'll do something similar for our bar's height. And now we can draw our outline rectangle. So we'll do the same thing as we did for the fill rect, call Pygames draw.rect method, pass in the surface, the color white, and then our outline rect. But for the width, we're gonna specify a value of two so it's a bit thicker than the fill rect. And you can see now this is what our loading screen would look like. So now all that we have to do is to actually change the fill rectangle's width so that it accurately reflects the progress that's been completed. To do this, we'll create a variable inside our constructor called progress and initialize it to zero. We're going to update this progress variable inside our loading thread to reflect the current progress. So in our display method in this loading screen class, we're going to scroll down to our progress bar code and then we're going to create a variable called PCT. This is going to be equal to the progress value divided by 100. So essentially we're going to say the progress has a value between 0 and 100 and the PCT value has a value between 0 and 1. And just in case this PCT value becomes a value greater than 1 for whatever reason because we're going to be incrementing it, we're going to make sure that we cap it at 1. Then we're going to create a variable called fill and this is going to represent the actual fill rex width. So we're going to set this equal to PCT times bar width so essentially we're taking a percentage of the bar width and we're going to show that percentage on our screen depending on the value of this PCT. So inside our fill rect, we'll change that width to this value fill. And that completes the changes in our display method. Now we need to update our progress variable inside our loading thread while preventing race conditions. 
To do this, we'll use a QE object. A QE object is a thread safe object that will allow us to share a variable between two threads. So we're going to import this QE module and then in our constructor, we're going to create a variable called QE and set that equal to the initialization constructor of the QE class. Then in our loading thread variable, we're going to specify an argument that we want to pass in the self.QE to this loading thread. Now, once this QE actually has a value within it, we want to update our progress variable. So we're going to create another method called update. And within this method, we're going to check if our QE has any new contents. So we're going to check if the QE is not empty. And if it's not empty, that means we can pop something out of the QE. We're going to say self.progress is equal to self.QE.get, which will basically extract the topmost value on the QE, which will be our new progress value. Then inside our run method, we can specify that we want to call this update method after our display method. Now we can go to the level one class inside our level one.py file. And in the new method of this class, the method that's going to be called by our loading thread, we're going to add a parameter called bar, which is basically going to hold our QE. Then within this method, we'll create a variable called progress, set that equal to zero right at the start. And then we're going to load that progress value into our QE. So we're going to say bar.put progress. And after we call self.load inside our new method, we're going to increment our progress again by a value of five. So basically in the load method, we just load our map data. So this won't take a significant portion of time. So we're just going to choose a value of five for this purpose. There's no accurate way to represent how much time this is actually going to take. It's all relative depending on what exactly we're calling in our new method. So I would expect creating the sprites and loading sprites from our sprite sheets is going to take longer. So we're going to assign a higher progress value to those procedures. So now under our sprite groups, we're going to increment progress again. This time we'll increment it by a value of 10 and then we'll put that into our QE. Now for importing objects from our tile map, let's say that importing all of these items pushes the progress up to 90%, which is fairly realistic because we don't really do anything else underneath this. So if this is the case, let's say that we want to increment the progress by the same amount for every object that we extract from the tile map. So what we'll do is that we'll specify an increment value. We'll take the value of 90%, subtract the progress from that, and then divide that by the length of our tmx data dot objects array. That means that every object within this array will be assigned the same increment value, which means we increment the progress by the same amount on every iteration. Then we can put this value inside our QE and that will update it every iteration as well. We're gonna have to use math.floor in this because I want the QE just to store integers instead of dealing with float numbers. So math.floor will just simplify that for us. Then after we create the camera, we've completed everything inside our new method. So we'll set the progress to 100 and load that back into the QE. If we run the game now, we can show our loading screen showing a moving progress bar. And in that clip, it was kind of quick. So here it is slowed down to 5% speed. We can see our progress bar is continuously updating as the game's assets are being loaded. And thus we've achieved our main functionality for this video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a question, please leave a comment below. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share it, and please subscribe to my channel.